Hi there, my name is Prashant and welcome back to TechScene Today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to turn a regular router and hard drive into a NAS. So, before we get into the video, our regular viewers might be asking yourself, uh, Prashant, what happened last week? You didn't upload. What's going on with the shirts? Two weeks you haven't been wearing your tech scene shirt. Okay, so I'm going to explain all of that before we get into it. So first of all, uh, the upload last week, right? So you guys know, the only reason that I miss an upload is if we are busy with a project that's really, really hectic or if I'm dead in hospital. So obviously, I'm not dead. So it means we're busy with an enormous project. And if, if I tell you it's enormous, I really, really mean it's damn enormous because this project is meant for November and we are busy with it in September. We're trying to push it out, make sure everything is absolutely running smooth before we go with it. Right, so that's it. And the shirts, I mean, you just have to stay tuned and maybe it has something to do with this big project coming in November, right? So anyway, onto the video. As I said, all you're going to be needing is your regular home router or, or Wi-Fi device or whatever you want to call it and a hard drive, right? Any hard drive will do. So most of the home routers come with a USB port on the device, right? And most of us don't know actually how to use it. We thought most, most people, I've seen actually people use this for charging. That's how kind of silly they are. But um, it has a function. You can upgrade firmware of your Wi-Fi device with it. But you also have the ability of turning it into a NAS, a network attached storage. So NAS as it is, stands for network attached storage. And that's all it is. You attach your hard drive or any storage device to a network. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have a big server like us and have your network shares or even have an actual NAS device with eight, uh, eight terabyte drives and stuff in it. A regular one terabyte, I think this is. Yeah, this is a one terabyte, two and a half inch drive. Will just as well suffice, right? So let's get into it. So the first thing that we need to do is take our hard drive and plug it into the back of our router. Right, so as you know, this is our home network setup. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about it because we have a full network tour and upgrade that we did towards the beginning of 2020. And if you'd like to see that, check that out in the link up there in our YouTube cards, right? So now all I'm gonna do, take this, and as I told you, there's a USB port at the back here, and I'm just gonna plug it in. So once your drive is connected to your router, modem, whatever, you need to go over to the address of your router, modem, whatever. So my address is 10.0.0.3. I'm gonna log in. All right. So once you log in, you're going to look for something by the name of Samba settings or storage or anything in that regard, right? So on my router, it's here under setup as storage. So when I click there, it says Windows file sharing, also known as Samba. Samba is enabled and there's a user and a password, right? So we go there and we click save settings. So now all we have to do is open our file browser and look for 10.0.0.3 okay so it is a little while later after after I've uh, after I actually recorded the part that I told you activate Samba and, and all those things. And as you can see, it is absolutely mind numbing, right? So someone actually, so the reason how I got the idea to do this video was someone spoke to me about doing this and then I got involved doing it and we came about the video, right? So for that person, it was absolutely easy. But here we have had endless hassles. We were recording at three o'clock. It's like half past 10 in the night now. And now we've managed to get it working, right? 
So let's jump back into this. Um, yeah. So after you've activated the settings, you have to know that these routers work with version one of that file transfer protocol or whatever it is. And what Windows 10 has done, it has blocked everything from before window uh, version one. So you'd have to physically go and activate version one for it to work, right? So let me walk you through the process and then I'll show you our network share, right? So all we have to do is go to our um, control panel. We go to, we go to programs, turn Windows features on or off, right? Let's wait for this. And then we scroll down and we look for SMB version one, file sharing support, right? So this, you, ha you actually have to tick that box. Mine wasn't ticked. So you tick that, then only it starts showing up on your PC, right? So I've ticked that on mine. And then what we have to do, you go to the web address or you type in the web address of your router. So mine is 10.0.0.3. So I'm going to type in double backslash 10.0.0.3. Enter. And here we go. Uh, well, obviously it asks you for your password and your username. And we open this. And there we go. We have our uh, legally obtained movies. <laughs> yeah. Our movies and our stuff like that. So I've seen other routers <clears throat> when I was trying to uh, troubleshoot this. There are other routers that come with built-in uh, DNLA. So that's a media player kind of thing. So that's more like the, the more recent and more expensive routers that can do that. But my version is, as you can see, a headache. It has version 1. But I mean, it works. And it actually solves the problem of not having a enormous server like mine, powered on 24-7. You have a 4 terabyte hard drive, plug it into the back of that, and then you have a network attached. Storage or a, sh a media sh or a, a network share that you can just dump stuff to. It doesn't have to be movies all the time that you're watching, but it can be anything from movies to saving your documents. You can have like a like a like your own cloud in your own home. Just throw your files up there. I want to say it's as easy as that, but it's not that easy, right? So you have to know, you have to activate version 1 of SMB file transfer protocol and all those things. But after you've finished troubleshooting those things, it's easy, it's simple, and it solves a lot of problems for many people, right? So that's it. So if you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a like rating if you did. And getting subscribed if you're unsubscribed already. Turning on post notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.